Interatomic forces can be broadly divided into two main categories, primary bonds and secondary bonds. Primary bonds are a stronger type and they form the main structural framework of materials. There are three primary bond types. First, ionic bonds. These occur when one atom transfers electron to another, forming oppositely charged ions. The strong Coulomb attraction between cations and anions holds the lattice together. Sodium chloride and magnesium oxide are classic examples. These compounds tend to be hard, have high melting points, but are brittle. Second, covalent bonds. Here, atoms share electrons to fill their valence shells. These bonds are directional and extremely strong, producing rigid structures like diamond, silicon, and germanium. The directionality of covalent bonds explains why these materials are hard but often brittle. Finally, metallic bonds. In metals, atoms release some of their valence electrons into a shared sea of delocalized electrons. The resulting positive ion pores are held together by this electron cloud. This explains the ductility, malleability, and electrical conductivity and characteristic shine of metals like copper, aluminum, and iron. So ionic, covalent, and metallic bonding together account for the primary forces that give solids their strength and stability. Now, let us move to the secondary bonds, which are much weaker than primary bonds, but is still extremely important in determining material behavior. These bonds usually have energies of just a few kilojoules per mole. The first type is van der Waals forces. These arise from temporary or induced dipoles, where electron clouds shift and create a weak interaction between atoms or molecules. Even though they are weak, they are universal, acting in noble gas, solids, liquids, and layered materials like graphite or molybdenum disulfide. In graphite, for example, the strong in-plane covalent bonds hold carbon atoms together, but the weak van der Waals forces between layers allow them to slide, giving graphite its lubricating property. The second type is hydrogen bonding, which is a stronger dipole-dipole interaction. It occurs when hydrogen is covalently bonded to a highly electronegative atom such as oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine and interacts with another electronegative atom nearby. Hydrogen bonding explains why water boils at such a high temperature compared to similar molecules, and it plays a crucial role in biology, stabilizing the DNA, double helix, and protein structures. So, while primary bonds form the solid skeleton of materials, secondary bonds fine-tune properties like adhesion, softness, flexibility, and biological functionality.